Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Radamic. Berto Willis, your host. How's everybody doing today? Hey, guys, I got the uh, link for the chat started a bit late, so I'm going to have to read in different places what you guys have put out there. Uh, so bear with me as I go ahead and read in several different windows so that I don't miss anything that you wonderful people have said. So I am setting things up as we speak. So bear with me as I open another YouTube channel to get to those who posted on YouTube. But anyhow, anyhow, welcome aboard. Michael Rudnin is in the house from Brooklyn, New York. Welcome aboard. Eric Hayes is in the house from King Wetatas Casita. We have Paul Fleming Sr. in the house from Powder Springs, Georgia. And let me get to my YouTube channel now to pick those up. No, you don't have to go ahead and post it again. I, I'll do the work. It's my boo-boo. So let me go ahead and fix that problem because I forgot to requeue the thing. So I'll take care of that. And I'm doing it as we speak, as we speak. I trust everybody is doing fine. I trust everybody is doing fine. Let me scroll up. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Michael Rudin says Kamala Harris baited then crushed Trump. So you'd figure the debate would have been much higher than a point. Newsweek first post debate poll. Uh, oh, I didn't see the first debate poll. Uh, it's only a point, eh? Uh, okay, let me see what else I'm looking. I'm reading your your piece in YouTube, but of course, it chopped it off. So let me go ahead and look at it in Facebook, which probably has it better. Uh, let's see if we have you there. Uh, a bit, but a bit, but a bit. Uh, but I tell you what, uh, Radin, go ahead and repost it. Go ahead and repost it. And for those of you who are in the chat, it's my boo-boo, but I'm going to ask you to go ahead and repost your message. Hey, Dr. Thais is in the house. Dr. Thais is one of my, uh, what can I say? I, I would have to call him my intellectual guide. This is a guy who knows everything about government, history, you name it, he does it. He knows it. He uh, was one of the guys who was instrumental in getting a piece of Occupy Kingwood put together and many other local local political events going here. Great to have you here, my brother. All right, let's see. Michael says, repeat in Newsweek. Our first post-debate poll shows Kamala Harris breaking out with lead. Vice President Kamala Harris has widened her lead over former President Donald Trump. According to Reuters, Ipsos poll conducted after the first head-to-head -head debate. The two-day poll shows lead uh, for Harris jump uh, leading Trump 47-42. I would like to see that over 50%, but I assume that it still has some independent candidates in there. Among registered voters, a five-point lead, that should be outside the uh, the error. And this is slightly higher than her four-point lead in the same poll, August 21 to 28. Uh, well, you know, we still have more massaging to do, and, you know, it's going to be hard for her to do outright breakout in the beginning. I think, I think the breakout is going to come like it did under Carter Reagan. Take a look at the Carter Reagan poll. Just before the election, it just cratered for, for Carter. I think that's what we're going to see for uh, the Trump, this, this Trump thing. People are go just going to say Trump is a kook and it's just going to go south after that. I am still sticking with my theory that it is going to be a landslide. Uh, Egberto, it's outside the error and there are there is a large number of undecided voters as well as a small number of third party voters. All right, uh, we also have Bridge MCP in the house. Bridge from Bingham, Binghamton, New York. Welcome, Bridge, to have you here. And by the way, Dr. Tice is from Kingwood, Texas. Maywood is from Long Beach, California. We also have Rudnin from Brooklyn, New York. And folks, keep putting it into the new stream. What happens is this. I replay the morning show at noon, and the, it kind of confuses the chat where I have to recycle the chat. And that's what happened to me today. Anyway, I have the first video to show you guys. This was done in Baltimore a, a, a month ago or a couple months ago with the executive director of the Working Families Party, How to Win 2024. This was a great interview. I want you guys to listen to this. 
and then we'll take it on the other side. Welcome to One More Edition to Politics on Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Today, we are honored to have the one and only Maurice Mitchell, who is the executive director of the Working Families Party. Brother, how are you doing every year I meet you here? Well, brother, first of all, it's good to be here. Yes. Secondly, I am feeling very much in my power. That's how I'm doing. Explain. Well, there's a way to approach politics. Right. Almost as a consumer. Right. Right. I'm a consumer of political information. I'm watching CNN or MSNBC or Fox News, maybe. Right? Yes, right. And I'm collecting this political information. And that's mainly in the marketplace of political ideas. Right. I'm a consumer. Right. There's a way that you could look at politics almost as sport. Right. right. So think about how you engage with sports where you support a sports team. Right. Right. But you're a spectator. Right. Right. You might have a team and you might wear, you know, their paraphernalia, but you're a spectator in sport. And so there's a way to approach politics as sport where you're a spectator. I choose to approach politics as an agent. Amen. Right? I as somebody that. that's on the battlefield. Exactly. Right? I believe that the things that I do Matters. in the political arena actually matter. Absolutely. That there are no guarantees, right? that nothing is pre predetermined. What determines political outcomes are the things that you do, I do, we all do, people who are watching us do. Right. So I'm firmly in my power and, I'm, I'm, and I also understand that it's not just about what I do as an individual. Right. Or what I might tweet as an individual, but what I'm able to do collectively right. with other people just like me. Right? right. That's the power of everyday people, the power of working class people. Whenever you've seen massive upheavals politically, whenever you've seen big and powerful people come down or corporations come down, usually there's a story about how everyday people came together, maybe in a labor union, maybe through a political party, maybe through a political movement. And and have transformed our society. And the amazing thing to realize for everybody is like, I'm one of those regular people. Absolutely. Who have, in every historical moment, been a part of transformation. What is stopping me in this historical moment from being part of transformation? The rea reality is nothing but your mind and your heart and your ability to organize other people. Maurice, very important. Right now, 2024 is coming and a lot of people are scared. Let sure. me first tell you, I am not scared at all. Mm -hmm. I know that if we go out there and do the work, first of all, I think the Republicans have left a pathway that progressives not winning would speak poorly of progressives if we don't win, given the damage that they're going to be doing to throughout the system. Why don't you tell our progressives what it is they need to do to ensure that what they're fearful of, instead of being fearful, they better get their butts to work? Oh, look, we have to do our historical responsibility right. between now and November, right? The concern that people feel is the stakes. The stakes right. are high, right. right? But look at what they did in France. Right. In France, you had a party that was a centrist party. Right. And it was like a centrist coalition. Exactly. And then you had a party that was a left party, which right. is a, co a left coalition. coalition yeah. Right. Not only did they not like each other, they hated each other. Right. Not only did they have policy differences, they didn't agree on any Anything. major policy. Yes. What did they do when the right wing coalition was gaining traction? They did their historical duty and came together in a disciplined and strategic way in order to defeat the right wing. And as a result, the progressive faction ended up being the leading faction. Yes. Why? Because our point of view as progressives is actually very popular right. with everyday people. And the right wing point of view is very unpopular. So MAGA and Trump and all the MAGA adherents, they are giving us a gift when they produce a almost a thousand page document that lays out their the plans path. for the yes. country. And in that document, what are they concerned with when people are attempting to make ends meet? and they're concerned with affordability, right? And they're concerned with, for example, the prices of, of, of uh, life-saving drugs and the pro-democracy uh, coalition, which we're a part of, have a, we have a solution for that, which is getting the pharmaceutical companies, right? Commandeering them in order to cap the prices of drugs. Mm -hmm. what, what is in Project 2025? Well, outlaw, outlawing pornography? What? That, when you get governing power, that's what you want to do. You want to tell me what I could watch on the internet? That, that's what you want to do with governing power? When our coalition wants to make sure that you and people like you are able to afford a dignified life, right? 
or they want to they want to maybe criminalize librarians that that share books that aren't on the approved state book list. That's what they want to do. They want to criminalize and make make abortion completely illegal. They are the force for big top down authoritarian government. Right. And we're the force for expanding democracy. And what I say is like, it's not about a man, it's about a plan. So it's actually not about Trump or Biden. Right. It's about what those elections, electoral outcomes unlock in terms of the space that we have to organize and and the time that we have to be able to advance our agenda. So our agenda is about, for example, if you are a working person and you don't have a union or you want to expand the rights that you have in order to organize, getting the PRO Act done, right? If you believe in democracy and you want to protect voting, right, getting getting the John Lewis Act past the finish line. Right. If you believe that you and your family and your doctor are the only people that should have a conversation about family planning or, or about your reproductive rights, right? Then it's about getting legislation that is more expansive than Roe on the agenda. These, the things that I just named, wildly popular, mm-hmm. not just with people who identify as being left or progressive or whatever, just with people who want a shot. Most people just want a shot and they want a government that's responsive to them. And so to me, everything that's coming out of Trump's mouth, everything that's coming out of his adherents, everything that's coming out of the MAGA movement is consistently about taking away rights, about expanding the government's role in your private life, about creepily being obsessed about people's sexuality and people's people's sexual lives and using the government as a way to expand and redistribute cruelty where we're using the government as a tool to be able to redistribute compassion. Maurice, that is a, such a stark contrast. You just made a, you just, you just said the template that needs to go out there. Why is it we can't get the Biden team to express it as succinctly to ensure it? Because you know what? Yeah. I could take this message to Appalachia. That's the, right. The, the middle area that MAGA lives in. Yeah. And that message would sell. Why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we investing in the in the folks who could go out there and do it? Look, I want to say two things. We are doing it on the grassroots because I'm I'm. Are you I, in Appalachia? Right, well, there's a there's a presence in in West Virginia, for example. Okay, got it. Family got party. it. Yeah. So we are doing it because because we are are in the grassroots talking to everyday people. Right. And we need to do more of it. Right. And we need people in in the upper echelons of the Democratic Party to hear this message. Exactly. I think they heard it. If you heard Biden yesterday in, Actually, you're, in you're Detroit. Right. Can you believe it, right? right? I yeah. think they're getting the message yes, now, yes, yes. right? Because there is both a record of accomplishments. And right. I would say these accomplishments aren't Biden accomplishments. These it's are progressive. progressive ac- and we are the ones who pushed them to yes. do it. So there's a record right. of accomplishments and a very stark contrast in terms of what folks want to happen because elections are about the future. Exactly. Right? So what have you done for me lately and what are you going to do for me? Right. Exactly. And there is a very clear contrast. This isn't hard. This is not hard. There is a message that everyday people who are not ideological, who are ideologically cross pressured, who believe some conservative things and some progressive things and some things that have nothing to do with politics. If they heard, they would be like, I got it. Exactly. There is no way we could be on the side of these folks. We need to be on the side of the vast majority that believe that government should be a tool t- in order to be able to expand compassion, not to be able to redistribute cruelty. Maurice, I've been writing articles for the last several months stating that the Republicans have given us a pathway to a landslide. And I don't understand why it is that we aren't picking up and running. So I'm going to ask you to close in this way. Yeah. Please look into that camera, which is that camera. Okay. And tell America, tell the people why it is that they need to support whatever the Democratic ticket is. Let me explain it like this. This is the actual choice. Anybody who tells you this is a choice between two men is not telling you the truth. The truth is this is a choice between two realities, between two plans. Like I said, it's not about the man, it's about the plan. One plan is a plan that is about further controlling your life, having the government obsess about your religion, your sexual life, create limitations on how your child could be educated. Basically limiting freedom. It's a big government, top down, limiting freedom, limiting your economic freedom and giving more economic freedoms to people who are already privileged and already powerful. And the 
other side, the other plan, this is very stark, is about upholding the ability to even fight for our freedoms. That's actually what's on the ballot. And nine times out of 10, when you place those stark realities between, uh, before anybody, any everyday person, they're gonna choose the reality that gives them a shot at building more freedom. The last thing I wanna say is that it's about the future. So we need to block authoritarians. We need to block people who believe that their idea of, of Christianity should become the state idea of Christianity and it should be enforced on you, right? People who strongly believe that, people who, who believe that separation of church and state is a problem. And I wanna say the separation of church and state is as important in protecting the church from the state as it is for protecting the state from the church, right? Those people are on one side. On the other side is the possibility to be able to build the country that we have never actually experienced, a democratic economy, a democratic society, where we have more freedoms, where we're able to be able to take and be able to benefit from the bounty that is the richest country in the history of, of countries. Why can't we, for example, in the richest country in the history of countries, abolish child poverty? We can, and why do we know we can? Because we enacted the child tax credit, which, which almost overnight dramatically brought down child poverty. What we now know is child poverty is a choice, a political choice. When you vote against MAGA, you're voting for the opportunity to debate whether or not we're willing to do that. When you vote for MAGA, you're voting for no longer having the opportunity to make that happen. That's what's at stake. And that's what should give us excitement and momentum around the ability to be able to defeat them, but more importantly, not just block them, but then to continue to organize, not for Democrats, not for Joe Biden, but for your family, for other working people, for the economy, society, and democracy that we know in our bones that we deserve. We can make that happen, but everybody who's listening is going to have to talk to their neighbors, talk to their family members, talk to their co co-workers and explain that it's not about a man, Whatever you think about these men, it's about a plan. Maurice Mitchell, executive director of the Working People's Family. My brother. And once again, let's do it again next year. We'll do it again next year. All right, all right? Let, let's get out there and win. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. All right, folks. Uh, so that those are your marching orders. There's, those are absolutely your marching orders. But let's get busy. For all of those who are, look, the mainstream media is picking up on Trump's wordiology. Oh, they want uh, it, it's never enough what Kamala says. She has pointed out in great detail what her outcomes, what outcomes she wants. A support for building more homes, support for uh, child care, support for all these things, a, a, an economy, a support economy. But they want more details. They want her to say exactly how she's going to do it. A double standard. I don't care what the hell. These uh, these guys are saying it is time for her to leave the mainstream media, leave the the the, the uh, Trump Trump the Trump sycophants alone. And while I understand, you know, again, what what's his name is supposed to be a good Tapper is supposed to be a good journalist, but he bought sinker, whatever, however you use it, he bought the same crap that Donald Trump and them were selling. But you know what? Somebody called them out on it. And I want to play, I think I played this yesterday, but for those newcomers that are here, Kamala Harris needs to do no more about specificity. She's already stated where she want to go. I kept on hearing pundits talk about where are the specifics for a Kamala, Kamala Harris's uh, proposals or economic plan for Americans, etc. She needs to put that out. She is currently the incumbent vice president who worked over the IRA and all these big plans that are succeeding in bringing not only economic success to many Americans, but are starting to improve the lives of other Americans. That's a statement of fact by the numbers. Yeah, I mean, we still need to do something about bringing price controls by really going after those corporations that are gorging Americans, etc. But they keep asking of her, where are your specifics? Where are your specifics? Where are your plans? Finally, Alencia Johnson gets really upset or concerned on a panel. And she said, 
Well, listen to what she said, and then we'll take it on the other side. I do want to push back on this notion where everyone is talking about Vice President Harris didn't give specifics. She gave numbers around the policies that she is believing will help the economy. She also talked about abortion access. And if she wasn't talking about policy, she was humanizing the issue. And it is really challenging that Donald Trump doesn't get the same smoke from the media and people who are saying that they want to hear more from Vice President Harris when he has never rolled out any policies. But he has has, you know, cozied up with the people who created Project 2025 who are going to have people monitoring women for the decisions about their bodies. And so Vice President Harris is giving us specifics. And it feels very much that the bar is higher for her, given that she's a woman. And yet Donald Trump, the bar is so low that he just gets to skate on by with no specifics at all. You know, he does a lot of media interviews, but again, doesn't give specifics. She does one major media interview, gives specifics, gives them at her rallies. She's completely different. Discipline. And so we saw that again last night. And I need for the people who are paying attention to this election to start actually thinking critically why aren't we asking Donald Trump the same questions about specifics that we are demanding of her? And she is right. Why are, are there are two standards being applied here? One is asking her to give a specificity that is not asked of Donald Trump, even as she tells people these are the particular plans I want in what we're calling an economy that works for all, an opportunity economy. Donald Trump says nothing. He doesn't answer the questions. He doesn't talk about specifically what he's going to do. Yet, none of these panelists, even as she mentioned it, later come and say, yeah, we probably need to ask Donald Trump a few more questions. This is a bias we have both in reporting by the mainstream media, how the main, and, and by the way, Many people, many average Americans are asking the same questions, but it's evident that it is prompted by the media. It shows that the mainstream media has the influence on people's minds as well. Because when she goes out and she says, I want to make sure child credit's given, I want to make sure that we get, uh, that we build more homes, I want to make sure that we do this, give a $50,000 tax credit to businesses, I want to make sure that people who are going for a home will have the the monies for down payments, etc. It's out there. But somehow she needs to give more specifics than Donald Trump. The loser who continues to act like an unhinged maniac. And that's who we want to control our government? I don't think so. Folks, we have got to get rid of both our our obvious prejudices, both realized and the ones that we have laid back in us. Come on, folks. Absolutely so. And uh, Bridge nailed it. Egberto Willis, misogynist men and internalized misogyny, sexism from women. Internalized sexism is a form of sexist behavior and attitudes enacted by women toward themselves or other women and girls. And you find that in the same way with race as well. You know, that's how you get the uh, Candace Owens and these other people that uh, that they will allow the white supremacists to use them as a backstop for the evil they represent. So you nailed it. I guess uh, you called it internalized misogyny sexism for women that means for for when it's race wise we'll call it internalized racism for black people or latino people or anybody any person of color i'm glad that you said it because again that is what who candace owen is and any single person of color that's a part of the maga movement absolutely you know it's funny because in florida we had a devoted MAGA guy goes go out there and he, he he started working to move Trump up the alley. I don't remember what his name was. And then it turns out that he find the people out there calling him a slave, etc., 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 etc. So we have to remember this. But by the way, as you know, uh, for all of those who want to hear from from Kamala, 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 and what she's going to do, here is the thing. Here is what a Republican thinks about. Kamala, this Republican thinks that Kamala needs to go head howl with the with the economy, because after all, that question that they would have liked her to answer specifically, are you better off today than you were when Trump was in office? That's a question that four years ago, that's a question that needs to be answered. The problem is it takes a little bit more than a sentence to answer it. 
And you know what uh, the Republicans have done t- to the to the attention span of Americans with all these sorts snippets. But anyway, listen to what this Republican brother has to say, and then we'll take it on the other side. You know, Trump, both the right wing and the mainstream media seem to want more uh, specific specificity from Kamala Harris and what her economic plan is going to be. After all, you're in the White House for three plus years and they want to have that debate. And supposedly Trump wants that debate as well. And, you know, I've always thought, wow, all the numbers based on the capitalist indicator indications, which we're still that society says that, wow, the the Biden Harris administration really, really cleaned up after the mess created by Donald Trump. Donald Trump liked to say, I had this great economy, etc. And people kind of buy it because they, they they believe that bait and switch that things were great right before the pandemic. The pandemic came, messed things up, and somehow Biden continued to mess things up. That is the kind of thing that they want to say. Reality is Trump was a continuation of an ascendant economy that that Obama gave him. He did very little other, other than giving a huge tax cuts to wealthy folks. Inflation was still fairly stabilized then. Then came the pandemic. The economic crash didn't just occur because of the pandemic. It occurred because of Trump, this complete bundling, bungling of how one should handle an impending and incoming ep- uh, epidemic that then turned into a pandemic. I mean, he should have learned from how Obama took care of his potential pandemic, how even Bush took care of his potential pandemic. You know why you never heard about it? Because they allowed science to reign and do its job. They didn't try to create false ideas. So in him not allowing science to reign and going around the world to start mitigating the prevention of the mitigating the, the spread of a pandemic, we got the worldwide economic crash. We can all we can definitely put that on Trump's back because the United States should have taken the lead in 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 uh, preventing the spread of this pandemic before it became a pandemic. But again, now Biden did what was necessary, flooded the economy with a Keynesian style economics of since people aren't working, since we don't want people to work, etc., we want to flood the place with money. And that way we recover quickly. Now, of course, inflation was created because those who control price and power knew people had money in their pockets. And guess what they did? They raised prices. And what's raising prices? Inflation. You know who gets it? A Republican gets it. A Republican said, you know what? Kamala Harris should welcome an economic discussion, a real economic discussion where she can actually come out and say the success that they've had with the Inflation Reduction Act, which went ahead and revived the economy, the infrastructure bill, which went ahead and created a lot of new high paying jobs and also the 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 uh, chips bill which went ahead and start bringing back manufacturing of chips etc to the united states let's have that debate our country the united states of america from an inflation standpoint from a manufacturing standpoint from a gdp standpoint is doing better than any other western country that follows our particular type of capitalist system you know i don't like the system but that's what we have. So we are, have exceeded any other country. So there is something to speak about. Let's listen to what this former Republican is saying, because he was able to enumerate all of this eloquently. And then we'll take it on the other side. Do you think Trump and some of his supporters believe that the key to victory actually is, I don't know, painting such an apocalyptic vision of where the U.S. is right now, that he becomes the change candidate. He becomes the one who can make it all better. Yeah, the textbook theory, dispassionately, is called negative partisanship, that he would run a campaign saying, Vice President Harris is worse than I am. You should be scared of her leadership. But Trump turns that into some racist, xenophobic narratives that reach for some of the darker elements in American culture. And then he also does the Chicken Little theory of American carnage. Chicken Little worked in 2016, but Chicken Little by Donald Trump's not working right now. 
And Chris, I would love to see more of a debate over the economy. We actually didn't see a lot of uh, debate on the economy because I think Vice President Harris and, and the Biden administration have such a strong response to that. Donald Trump wants to play on inflation. The entire world suffered from historic inflation coming out of the pandemic and U.S. policymaking around it. But the U.S. is the envy of the world in its recovery. More people went to work this week than ever before. Home ownership remains at historic highs. The stock market is breaking records. Inflation's coming down and real wages are going up. Access to health care and education is at historic highs and investments in infrastructure are unlike anything during the Trump years. So if Donald Trump wants to actually have a policy debate on the economy, I think Vice President Harris should welcome that. And I would also suggest there's a lot more room for Vice President Harris to run on that. We didn't see that on the debate stage when she took the question, are you better off today than you were four years ago? Yes, we are for reasons of the Biden-Harris administration. It would be a wonderful debate for this country to have in the last six weeks of this race. So yes, let's have the economic debate. Donald Trump, we know, can't have it because he can't string a sentence together. Those who follow him are ideological puppets. They're ideologically gullible to believe that just because he is who he is, that somehow things are going to be OK. The truth of the matter is this, there's, uh, there are two things that need to be said. The economy always does better under Democrats. And it's not an accident. It's because of the way their economic policies are designed. It's not designed to throw money up to the top and hope that the rich people have mercy on those below and somehow create jobs for them. That's not how it works. You give money to the bottom, create the demand, and those who have the capitalist structure to, to fulfill that demand gets it done. Folks, we have to rethink economics. We have to rethink what we have learned about economics because what we have learned has been pushed by the plutocracy. And what we have to do going forward is educate ourselves, understand that the current economic system is a fraud, and, the, and make the changes to this economic system so that we think people first and ensure that the economic structure that surrounds the people thinks humanity first, and that's how we all succeed. Remember the motto, there is no billionaire that isn't a parasite. There is no billionaire that is not a parasite whose fortune was made on your back. And that's not envy. That is not, that is not feeling that, the, uh, you know, somehow I want it and, and I envy what they have. That is simply a mathematical statement of fact. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join. Absolutely join us, folks. Absolutely join. Don't forget, go to politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. Please consider becoming a paid subscriber to help us continue doing this the best. You know, we put a lot of work into making sure we keep you informed because there's a whole lot of money. I know all of you heard about the uh, Russian company that paid a, a whole lot of, well, three of the major, uh, I can't remember their names right now, the, the major, what do you call those? Influencers on the right wing, they were working for the Russian government to put out Russia positive messages, to put out messages against Ukraine. All these things, you know, it, it's funny because if we had done something like that, in the, if you got a progressive uh, to, to, to do something like that, we would not hear the end of it. But these guys, they are nothing more than Russian agents. And then they claim, oh, we didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't know. Of course you didn't know, right? Of course you didn't know. Let me see if I can get their names because I want people to know who are these people that actually Tim uh, Poole. Remember Poole? Uh, oh, you know, he likes to play. If you listen to Tim Poole, he likes to get all mad. People are doing all these bad things. They're immoral. 
Turns out the sucker was getting money from Russia to put out Russia friendly messages. Tim Poole, Dave Rubin, you got right you right wingers know who these guys are. Uh, Benny Johnson. Oh wow. If, if somebody's giving you a hundred thousand dollars for a video, shouldn't that kind of ring a bell for you? A hundred thousand dollars for a video, right? That you're told what to do or that you're influenced on what to do. Hey, here's $100,000. Put this through the channels of your 2 million subscribers. Man, I tell you. And here I am, given real information, given real uh, stuff, having to say, oh, would you guys subscribe to my newsletter for a coffee a month? And these guys get big audiences with big money from Russia. With that, they go ahead and pay for building ads for bringing folks to their site. Everything at Politics Done Right, you're looking at it right now. Yours truly, yours truly. No, no, no Democratic Party is putting a penny in. No Republican Party is putting a penny in. Everything that we get here comes from whom? You! You support this. Nobody's trying to pay me to influence you. Everything that you hear here is because we believe in democracy. We believe in these things. Think about it. Think about it. It's amazing. These guys sold their soul just like Candace Owen. She was a liberal she was a liberal blogger, but money talks, right? I got a lot of offers to turn this into a right-wing site. And I said, absolutely not. It would have been very lucrative. I said, absolutely not. This is not about money. This is about doing the right thing. You know, I remember the last email that I got. Oh, are you sure? Are you sure? Absolutely, I'm sure. What's your number? They call that, they call my, my Google number at the site. I'm like, not interested. Absolutely not interested. But it would have been lucrative Coke has a lot of money and they go through all these third party organizations. You'll you'll get an email from some sort of a thing called uh, the Heritage Foundation had one that sent an email out. Right. It's lucrative. But you know how we support giving you the progressive message because we don't have those deep pockets that are willing to give the small operation. Even the Democratic Party, they give ten thousand and fifteen thousand and twenty five thousand dollars to the you know whom to those analysts. I remember with the coffee party, our culture is about money. This is how we measure a person's value. Exactly, Dr. Tice. Let me tell you something. I remember this. I, I'm a board member or was a board member of the coffee party before we merged into the Bridge Alliance. And we, uh, we had this, this thing in, in, uh, in DC. It was called uh, Enough is Enough. And we, rent, we, we went ahead and, and reserved the West Mall on the on the Congress side, I'm going to see if I can find the video. And as we do this, all these people start all these parasites in Washington D.C. So, well, you need a publicist. You need all of this. People donated over two hundred thousand dollars to our coffee party for the Enough Is Enough project. All of that money was gone in one month to all these different people that we had to pay for X, I, and Z. To put on this, uh, to put on this stuff. I want to see if I can find it. Enough is enough. Let's see if I can find. I, I, I'd like to show you guys kind of what we did back there because I think you would actually like this stuff. Uh, let's see. Enough is enough. Maybe I can. Uh, do I have enough time for that? Let's see if I can get it played. Uh, let's see if I can get it played. I'll see if I can get it played. Let's see. No, that one is too long. That one is too long. Uh, let's see if I have a shorter one. Anyway, I keep talking in the, in the, in the, in the chat, folks, because I, I want to see if I can find this one for you guys. Let's see. Let's see if I can find this one. This, this may be not. This may be. It may be in here. It may be in here. But, you know, but it turns out then that it was like, wow, it's all about money. It's all a scam. You know? It's all a scam. Oh, I got one that maybe we may be able to do this one. Let's let's see if I can do this one. Maybe I can. Maybe I'll get it to work this time. You know how sometimes I have problems bringing up these things. Uh, let's see if I can get. Let me go to this here and I'm going to go and see if I can get the audio set correctly. Guys, bear with me. I'm doing this on the fly. I'm doing this on the fly. Uh, let's do it like uh, let's do it like that and expand it like that. Let's see if we get it working. 
Let's see if I get it to work, guys. I'm almost there. I'm almost here. Let's see. All right. Hold on. I think I can do it. I, You know, I keep running into this and say I want to fix it. Then when I get off the air, I don't get it fixed. And then I'm like, why didn't it work again? Why didn't it work again? Give it to the default device. Oh, I think I know why. I think I got to go and take the default device from me. I have the default device on me and I need to change the default device. Uh, let's see how I change the default. De I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it, guys. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it done this time. I'm going to get it done this time. Okay, I take it off the default. Let's try again. Well, I could not be more proud. Okay, I'm coming. More proud. Uh, Lord, why can't I get that done? I am still going to try. I'm still going to try to get this. I want to get guys bear with me on here air here for a minute because I want to finally get this stuff working and I want to figure this out. Capture the video. Let's see. Capture the audio. I need to learn how to do this stuff anyway. So I hope you guys can bear with me a second. OK, how did why did that change? OK. Why did that change? Let's see. I guess I went to the wrong one. Uh, let's see. Citizen intervention. Let's see if that was the reason why. Uh, let's see if this will work. Not it. Work with me here, guys. Let's see if I can get it working. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm not going to get it done. I tell you what I'm going to do, though. I'm going to put the link inside of the uh, I'm going to put the link inside of the chat and you guys can go watch it on your time. But this is what we did. We, we were out there on the mall in, in D.C. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't get it working this time. I'm going to work on this after the show, immediately after the show, because I've got to be able to play these videos uh, directly from the Internet. And I don't know why so far I've had problems doing it. I'll figure it out for you. Anyway, folks, we're at 51. Anybody wants to call in, give me a call. 781-823-7747. I don't have any more videos. I gave you four. It's time for you to talk. Number is 281-823-7747. Give me a call. Give me a call. Una vez más lo voy a repetir. A 281-823-7747. Who's going to call and tell me? what they need to tell me about the election and or, or about just about anything. Give me a call. And here we go. Brother Ray. Come on in, Brother Ray. How you doing? Hey, Brother Egberto. Uh, yeah, I know you was pretty busy this morning. Let me turn down my TV. Yeah, it was. Okay, it, here we go. It so, uh, was it was a uh, the whole let me tell you these days all we have six lines that we can answer concurrently lately in the mornings and i don't know people get up early in the mornings to listen to the show now all six lines are always taken you know it just keeps coming so i'm happy i love it well why do they get up that's because of you brother Egberto, uh, uh, hey, I'm, brain. I'm touched brother i really am so what's up my brother i have my alarm set it just to just the FYI. Talk to me, brother. But um, yeah, I, I was actually uh just wanting to uh basically talk about the debate, and uh, yeah, I'm convinced that Mr. Donald Trump soiled himself on stage because those facial expressions were very Manson esque. He 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 remind me so much of Charles Manson, and you know he's clearly a psychopath. He's that, a psychopath. You know, is, yeah. Is the same. I mean, once he and, and then he started to start when he blurted out there eating the dog, you know, I was like, OK, I had to let everybody had to giggle at that one. And then you realize what he was really saying. He's talking about Haitians. Yeah. You know, you, you, you racist SOB. And hey, you know, hey, I watched hold another on. hey, hold on a second. I want to read something from Breach just as a matter of information for our MAGA people here. I, I <laughs> don't 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 leave. I needed to stay, but I need to read this. Egberto. Colorado mayor poli police respond to Trump's claims that Venezuelan gangs is taking over. Kaufman's and Jurinsky's statement goes on to explain how the issues in the city have been experienced at a select few properties and do not apply to the city as a whole or large portions of it. Tren de Aragua has not taken over the city. The statement continued, the overstated claims fueled by social media and through select news organizations are simply not true. Again, TDA's presence in Aurora is limited to specific properties, all of which the city has been addressing in various ways for months. 
In other words, it's just like having a bad apartment building that a few bad people move into and, and they blow it up to make it seem like more than it is. It's evil what they're doing. They're trying to create dissension among communities to try to win on hate. Continue, my dear brother, Ray. And I want to speak on uh, your brother from uh, Working Families Party, which, by the way, uh, I'm very fond yeah. of, you know, a very good progressive organization that I've worked closely with. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Brother Neil Aquino, what he's doing, you know, for Houston politics and democracy. And, you know, I try to do my piece, you know, every every day, you know, walking neighborhoods, just trying to make sure people know, you know, this is not about helping them. This is about them helping you. But Mm -hmm. in order for them to help you, they need to be in power. And if they are not in power, you need to get them in power. If they're already in power and you ask, well, why haven't they done it yet? Well, look at the position they have. Do they have any support? You know, if the state representative is a minority in the Democratic Party, the only thing they can do is reduce the harm that the Republicans are trying to bring upon us. So they need us to come out every cycle and flip those seats so that way we know what power see the reason why tim walls is so popular up in minnesota and i'm not gonna rant i'm not gonna ramble too long is because they have a democratic trifecta they had him as the governor and they had a democratically controlled house and senate so they were able to get the nice things that you know they wanted because they actually used their democracy to its full advantage. And unfortunately, you know, Texans have been brainwashed for so long that our vote doesn't count because we are always seen as, quote unquote, a red state. You know what I wish, Egberto, if, if, if I had it my way, they could keep the Electoral College. Let us, let us have our little blue dots because we have a few of them. Mm-hmm. You know, if they, oh, split yeah. it, if they split up the Electoral College in Texas, let us have our blue dots. Y'all could have the rest of the red Texas part if that's what y'all want. That would but, be a compromise I'd be willing to make. But here's the problem. But, they, would, they would never go with that because <laughs> the blue dots are where the people live. The red areas may look big on the map, but nobody lives there. But they have more power based on gerrymandering. So what they do is they split up the blue areas into like take a look at how many Congress people we have here in Houston. Right. Uh, and how they split the district. You have these districts that do some snakes around the red areas so that they will they'll they'll stick 80 percent Democrats in a district so that they can split another district. 51 percent Democrat. I mean, 51 percent Republican, 49 percent Democrat. It's amazing what they do. The reality is there are more Democrats. There are more progressives in Texas. Gerrymandering. Had, now, you, you may then ask, so why isn't the governor a Democrat? Again, gerrymandering doesn't work on the state level, but what does work on the state level is making it more difficult to vote in areas that would normally vote blue. That's why you get long lines in, in, in minority areas, in areas that vote Democratic. And you get, you know, in Kingwood, I can walk and I can walk in and vote in five minutes just about every single time. But you go to certain parts of Houston in South Park. You're in the line for two hours. The guy who who Kim Og tried to throw in jail, the black guy, he stood in line for six hours. That's how determined he was to vote. But that's what they do. They do all kind of magical things to keep people from voting. But we have a whole lot of projects on the on the ground right now, including what you do with tops. You work very hard with top to enlighten people and make sure that they, that we start fixing that problem, Ray. Hey, well, I do what I do. You know, TOP is a, is a, good, a great organization to, uh, to affect change locally. At, and, 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 you know, I'm calling it, you know, as far as what you say, I'm going to be a little bolder. I say Texas could be the next Georgia if we play our cards right. And You're they right. don't cheat, you know, but they've already cheated. They, they threw two million people off the roll. We got to be able to counter that that move. But well, I do believe we have the numbers here. Every day, Jack reminds me to tell people they have 20 something days to vote right now. I mean, to register to vote and also keep checking the voter rolls to make sure. Go to ha- in, the, in the case of Harris County, go to HarrisVotes.org to make sure 
you're still in the on the rolls. And it, whatever county you're in, Montgomery County or whatever, just find your county office, the website for your county office, and verify that you are, in fact, registered to vote. I've done it. I know you've done it, Ray. Everybody that's listening to my voice, oh, I don't yeah. care if you're in New York. I don't care if you're in Georgia, because we have people in the room right now from California, New York, Georgia, Minnesota, Texas. We have people from all over in, in this chat right now. So what we have to do is remember, wherever you are, register to vote. Michael McLaughlin says, one Republican threat to shut down government. It would seem everyone working for USA community would actively target Republicans who vote for shutdown now, election day. It's amazing that even the Congress is completely non-functional. We need to, first of all, get a Democratic Congress keep a, a, a democratic Senate and, and blow up the filibuster completely. And then we, and then we'll get to pass policies that Americans want. And we'll have to get rid of the blue dogs as well, of course, but that will give us, people would see government work for them. And if people see government working for them, they would have no problem. Oh my God, Ray, it's after four o'clock. What did you do to me, sir? Oh, uh, my bad. I was just trying to fill your time slot, but you were right on everything. And I think that's not lost on, on, on Kamala and that administration when they take place. They definitely know they need the trifecta in order to affect the change. And I'm going to leave I, it at that. I'm not going to say you. anymore. Thank you, my brother. We got to get out of here. Anyway, folks, I, I got to do a quick ask. Thank you very much for calling, Ray. Love you, brother. Anyway, let's go ahead. I have to do my ask. I got to do my ask. Folks, uh, please, if you, if you, if you like what you see, if you understand what we're doing, I want to ask you so kindly to support our program. And how do you do that? You can support us, first of all. Our all-encompassing support link is at politicsdoneright.com slash support. Guess what? What I'm asking all of you to do is, uh, however, become a paid subscriber of our newsletter. The paid subscriber of our newsletter can be reached at politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter politics slash newsletter if you become a paid subscriber you get full access to all of my books again if you get if you become a paid subscriber you get access to all of my books and what does that look like uh, first of all once you're a paid subscriber and you uh, look on the screen uh, you go to egberto.substack.com uh, you go to my books and you get to see my books as i see it class warfare the only resort to right wing doom how to make america utopia take away the economy from those who rigged it it's worth it how to talk to your right wing relative friends and neighbors tribulations of an afro latino caribbean man Racism didn't stop my smile, hope, or journey forward. You get to read all those books online. And if you happen to want a hard copy of the book, you can get that too. Just go to politicsandright.com slash books. Politicsandright.com slash books. But my ask today is that you become a paid subscriber of our newsletter. It's less than a coffee a month. So consider giving us a coffee a month. Subscribe to our newsletter, and we will continue doing the hard work we are doing to maintain our democracy. I got to get out of here, folks. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right, and you guys know how I end this baby. I what? We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead. Number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.